Hi guys, I am Glenn, also known as Mr. Crafty Man. That is also the title of my YouTube channel. And <coughs> today I do not have my wife Petra with me. We are in the process of purchasing a new house. So she's down working on the other house. Um, I guess she wants to get it prepped for painting a new carpet. So in my Facebook kidney group, um, we've got about, I believe, like 900 members in there. Um, it's a really good group. Uh, a lot of constructive conversations going on inside of there. There's been a couple non-constructive conversations, and those people have been removed from the group. Um, but in the group, something that I have been noticing is there's a lot of people who are kind of taking the plant-based diet quite literally. And there's a couple couple things I want to talk about in this video. One, I want to talk about the, the plant-based diet. And secondly, probably more importantly, I want to direct this video uh, at individuals who are newly diagnosed with kidney disease. Um, the, the, the kidney disease, if you have watched my first video, or my second video, the one where I'm wearing the black shirt that says Patriot across it, um, I'm talking about how when I had been diagnosed with it, I had never even heard of it before, had no idea what it was. So I know how I felt when I was first diagnosed, um, just sheer panic um, and one of the first things I did is I went on Google and said how long does uh, someone with stage 4 kidney disease have to live and that caused even more of a panic. So what I'm calling this video and I, I'm going to talk about the, the plant-based diet a little bit too after I talk about some other things but what I'm calling this video is five weeks of pure hell because that is basically what I went through and how I felt uh, for five weeks when I was first diagnosed. So, I mean, I, I was extremely terrified and I know that many of you are too. I get your emails. I get your your messages, I get your uh, your messages through Facebook. Um, there's a lot of panicking going on. And I can tell you, the day that I was diagnosed was not the worst day of my life. The, the worst day came two days later, uh, after I had done even more Google research and, and uh, kind of started to get over the initial shock. I mean, it, it was horrible. Um, it was the Monday following my diagnosis and I had been diagnosed on a Friday. But that whole day, that was the day that I understood how some people could commit suicide. I, I had always had a, a difficult time understanding how somebody could possibly do that until that day. What you guys need to understand, those of you who are newly diagnosed and who are panicking right now, is there's no need to panic. Relax. Something you have to understand is this is not something that happened to your body overnight. This is something that took years to, to happen. This happened through obesity. It happened, or, or the majority of the time, it happened through obesity. It happened through... Uh, uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled uh, high blood pressure, or low bl blood pressure. So it's not like you're going to be dying tomorrow. You you do have time to to change your life right now. And those of you who are newly diagnosed and panicking have, I'm sure, been on Google, and you have searched and you've seen the same things that I've seen about how it's not uh, it's not curable. So, I, I'm here to tell you, I, I, I don't want to say it's 
that it's not curable because I I believe it is. Um, after you watch this video, go and watch my video that's an hour and four minutes long, the one where I'm wearing the black shirt that says Patriot on it, and I'm showing you proof. Um, I'm showing my, my labs from when I was first diagnosed where it says a GFR of 25, and then I'm showing you labs where my GFR has went up to 67, and <coughs> excuse me, in one of the other videos, I show you labs where it went up to 72. And it went up to 72, that was the, the end of October. So my next labs are going to be the end of February, so next month, probably about a month from today, and I've been doing some experimenting on myself. I know that what I was doing before was working, um, but that was the first 90 days. So I'm in the process of uh, doing some experimenting. We even saw we even saw the second 90 days. Now I'm doing something. Um, let's see, November, December, January. I, I'm doing something that even goes beyond that, and I'm doing something quite different. So. I could see results where my lab numbers have lowered. I could see results where they're higher. I really hope they're higher, but if they're, they've lowered, that's okay. Because if I follow everything that I had done previously, things will go back to the way that they were. So try, try to relax. Try to get over this feeling of gloom and doom. You're going to be fine. You have time. Um, what you can do now to start improving things quickly and immediately, um, one of the big things that you can do is you can start drinking water. Um, and for those of you who have been watching all my videos, you've heard this before. I say this again and again and again. And as I'm giving you this advice, advice let me tell you, I am not a medical doctor. I am not a healthcare professional. What I'm telling you is the things that worked for me. Um, I did go against the advice of my nephrologist, the renal dietitian, and my primary care provider, and I'm glad I did. So again, um, I'm not promising all of this is going to work for you, but it sure can't help or sure can't hurt because it's all healthy. Um, and now every time I go to see the nephrologist or my primary care provider or the, the renal dietitians, they're talking about um, how it, they, they've just never seen this before. They have no advice for me except for keep doing what you're doing. And I'm happy about that. Um, so here's what you can do now. You can start drinking water. Start drinking at least a half ounce of water per uh, pound of weight that you currently weigh. Um, right now, I believe... I, I'm probably drinking a little more than I need. I'm drinking four of these bottles a day. This bottle is 40 ounces. Um, so three to four of those a day is what I'm drinking. But um, the first 90 days, I was drinking like 90 ounces of water. So start doing that. And what that's going to do is it'll, it'll lower your bun and it can also start to raise your GFR a little. I mean, maybe not a whole lot, but it'll definitely start to raise it. Um, Something else that you can do right now that can start helping you out is you can start exercising. I know some of you um, are not in a, a good enough physical condition to for strenuous exercise, and that's okay. I wasn't either. Um, some of you can barely walk. That's okay. Um, there's other exercises you can do. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to get our, we're trying to get up to our peak heart rate. We're trying to get our cardio, um, our cardio in shape. And this did not take me long to do at all. I think it took me probably 60 days when, to, or, or until the time that my cardio was up to very good to excellent. And since that time, it has, it has been very good to excellent for my age the entire time. What I do and this was all I was doing the first 90 days. I would go to the gym. I would get on the elliptical trainer. I would. Uh, I started out at probably level two. I would go for 
15 minutes and then a five minute uh, cool down period and I would drink like 16 ounces of water during that time period. Um, something that's probably the hardest to do, uh, or at least it'll, it'll be hard for a lot of you, but those of you who are scared and have received their wake up call now, this is going to be easy to do because life is more important to you than food and that's going to be starting to eat right. Your nephrologist and your doctor and a renal dietitian are going to tell you it's okay to eat meat, this kind of thing, just eat healthy quantities. I don't believe that's true because animal protein is difficult for the kidneys. So eat plant-based. Um, I don't eat any animal protein whatsoever. Um, and I eat what I call raw plant-based and what that means and this is also for those of you in the kidney group and I'm going to put the link to this kidney group in the description of this video. Um, for probably the first week it kind of sucks for you. You're eating salads and everything and you're just lost. You have no idea what you can eat and then you happen to see the, the plant-based frozen food section of Walmart. and that's when everything kind of changes for you. Oh boy, this says plant-based on it. That means I can eat all of this. Very little of what's in the frozen food plant-based section of Walmart is actually good for you. Um, there is an app. Let's see if I can find it. I posted it in the uh, in the kidney group today. Let me go in there and I'll tell you the name of it because it's, it's really important. It... Um, it tells you what foods are good and what foods are not good. Give me just a second here. Um, I think it's called something like Yaku or something like that. Um, hold on just a second because I really want, want to tell you about this. Okay, so it's called Yuka, spelled Y-U-K-A. And the little icon for it, I don't know if you can see this, let me see if I can get the light out, is a little carrot. So with this here, with the free version of it, um, you can scan uh, barcodes on food and it'll come back and it'll tell you if it's, if it's poor, is it bad, is it good, is it excellent, whatever. But if you pay for the premium, and it's not very expensive, I think it's like $10 a year. Everybody can afford $10 a year. So I don't want to hear the fixed income thing here. Um, but with that, you can actually go into the search and you can search foods and it will tell you uh, how good it is. So one thing I want to, to search for real quick, um, People in the group are talking about this Morningstar Farms chicken nuggets and how delicious they are. So let's go in here. Okay, so Morningstar Farms. And I'm just clicking the little search. Okay, the Morningstar Farms chicken nuggets, veggie chicken nuggets. One thing I want to say is just because something is plant-based does not mean it's good. Um, this here, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. And hopefully you're going to be able to see it when I zoom in. Okay, so what this is saying is it is saying that these these nuggets are poor. It's giving them a rating of 49 out of 100. And the reason why, it tells you why. It says it has additives. Certain additives are risky. I'm going to zoom back a little here. So it says it has um, two hazardous additives inside of it. Um, let's see if it's going to tell us. It says two of them are hazardous, uh, five of them have no risk. The hazardous ones, it says, are glu glutamic acid and disodium disphosphate. And those are the, one, the additives that make it bad for you. It also has 370 milligrams of sodium and 
So those are the things that make it really bad for you. But in some of the videos, you have seen me talking about the um, Morning Star Farm sausage patties. Now, the sausage patties are being rated as excellent. Um, everything is green here. The only thing that's red is it says it has, it says it's a bit too salty. So it has 210 milligrams of sodium. And that's okay because um, most of us need to be eating about 1200 to 1500 milligrams of sodium a day. So with this being 210 milligrams of sodium, it's not going to hurt anything. But it, um, so yeah, you can go through, download this, and next time you go to the store and you're going through the, the frozen food section, um, go ahead and scan the items and look at the back of the package and you'll see that uh, a lot of it, in fact, most of it is not good for you. There's only a couple things that are. Um, so when I'm saying raw plant-based, what I mean is you go to the store, you go to the produce section, you pick out your own produce, raw produce, and you take it home and you cook your meals yourself. That's what I'm talking about when uh, when I say raw. And I'm not talking about this free-for-all that a lot of the people in the kidney group are having where they're, they're just buying anything and everything plant-based, eating as much of it as, as they want, and then they're coming in like after 30 days or 60 days or uh, or... I think one or two, even 90 days, and talking about how their numbers didn't improve. They either stayed the same or they went down. Well, look at what you're eating. You you need to follow the plan strictly. You can't cheat on this. You need to stick with it. Um, somebody was talking about how they were like ordering DoorDash and all this kind of stuff. That I mean, that's gonna hurt you. You need to be you need to be all in. Um, so your life needs to be more important than what you're eating. Um, it's still enjoyable eating like this once you once you kind of get the hang of it. I've got plenty of videos that I've been posting that have different recipes and everything inside of it. Um, and like for me, for lunch almost every day, I have the vegetable masala. That's my choice. Um, I don't dislike it. I kind of like it. Um, plus, I'm at work, so it's something that's really easy for my wife to put in one of the little... Uh, meal containers and bring for me. So, again, relax. You, you don't have anything to panic about right now. Um, I Don't quote me on this, but I believe that I read that from the time we turn 35, we lose like uh, one to an average of one, but one to two points on our GFR every year. So I believe there's a couple people in the in the kidney group or and people who have written to me who have GFRs that are like in the 90s. You have absolutely nothing to worry about. I wish my GFR was in the 90s. Even even people in the 80s. Um, if you're like in your 60s or 70s and your GFR is is like 60s, 70s, 80s, it's going to last you the rest of your life. Um, just remember that. The GFR goes from a scale of 1 to 120. Um, so think about how long you've lived and how long it took you to lose what you had. Um, and I don't even... So I had mentioned something to my nephrologist because my brother has a GFR of 105. And when uh, she had seen that mine was 70, 72, which is considered to be normal now, um, I said, yeah, but my brother's is 105, and she said, it's not a numbers game. Um, and she didn't go into that too much, but uh, I guess some people have high GFRs, other people have have GFRs, which, I mean, some of us might consider to be low. Right now, what I consider to be low is, is like uh, the stage 4, stage 4 and some of the, some of the 3Bs, but it's still something that I believe can be reversed. Um, something I want to mention to you, those of you who have been follow following my videos know this already. I found some blood labs, and I had them around here somewhere. They're probably here, but I'm not going to dig them out of this cabinet right now. I found blood labs from 15 years ago, and my GFR at that time was 66. Um, nothing was ever said to me. And 
just the fact that now it's 15 years later and my GFR is 72 and we were, were supposed to lose one to two points per year. So I lost it, but I, I managed to gain it all back. Um, and I was very, very happy about that when I saw those results and the doctor told me uh, my GFR had went up. It was almost like they were giving me years because something that I was thinking about that kept going through my head and would cause me a lot of anxiety and panic was I was thinking of the GFR like a clock. So when my GFR was 25, I'm sitting there counting in my head, well, if I if I lose two a year and and dialysis starts at this stage, then I've only got this long this long left. Or don't think of it that way. Um, just don't panic. Just get to work on it. Um, I can help you with that. But again, I'll mention I'm not a doctor. Well, I do have a doctorate's degree, but it's a doctor in education. I am not a medical doctor. I am not a, a medical professional, but. I'm, I'm very happy to answer all of the questions. Um, you can, you, if you join the kidney group, again, the description or the link is in the description of this video. Um, go ahead and join. You can message me all you want. You can also email me, um, glenn with two n's, jl69 at gmail.com, and I'm more than happy to write back to you. Um, what I really cannot do, and I apologize for this, um, I want to help everyone, but I, I just know that I can't help everyone, is I cannot take phone calls. Um, I run multiple businesses, and I have every time I have taken a phone call, it's come back to, to bite me. People say, oh, all I need is a couple minutes, just a couple minutes, just five minutes, just ten minutes, and they have never been less than an hour. So the whole time I'm doing it, I'm getting my butt chewed on because I'm I'm on the phone when I'm supposed to be working. Um, as, so as far as the food, the food is the biggest area of concern for a lot of people and confusion. Join the Facebook group. Um, I mean, I've got we're all talking about food in there. Also watch my videos where you see my wife and I standing in the kitchen. Um, we're making food. We're making food that's healthy for you and something that is yummy. Um, next week we're going to make um, ramen noodles that are plant-based, um, vegan, and actually good for you. So you're going to want to see that. Uh, I think last week I had that probably three times. I also had it for dinner last night. Um, I am. I had been referring a book. Um, I don't want to refer that book anymore because it is not diabetes friendly and it causes more questions um, than answers because a lot of the people with kidney disease are diabetic and the guy who wrote the book is not diabetic. So he did not have diabetics in mind when he wrote it. Um, so I am currently working on a book that is diabetic friendly and kidney friendly at the same time. So I will let you know when that book comes out. Um, and it's not it's not going to be too long from now. I'm, I'm pretty far into it. Um, basically in the front of it, it's going to have the entire plan for everything I did. Plus it's going to have be full of diabetic friendly recipes. It'll have my shake recipe in it. Um, those of you who are sitting there, this is one of the first videos you saw in here. What's the shake recipe? Well, I actually have a video about that, that and, uh, but you need to watch the hour long video first and then start watching the food videos and it'll kind of catch you up. So, again, um, join the, the Facebook kidney group. There's plenty of people in there. Um, for the most part, everyone is, is giving good advice. But what I notice is every time someone does labs and they say, oh, my GFR went up, um, there's kind of a mad rush towards that person. You've got a couple hundred people running all of a sudden. What'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? Um, and then somebody else will will say, well, my numbers went down and everybody goes running over to that person. What, what were you doing? What were you doing? And then somebody else says, well, 
my numbers went up and everybody runs all of a sudden back to that person. Um, everybody's a little bit different. Um, some of these people are talking about things that they were eating that really weren't wasn't so healthy. Um, the best bet is just to, to eat the, the raw plant-based. Um, some of the people who were in there talking about their, their GFR going down, they just weren't a hundred percent all in. You have to be a hundred percent all in. This your your life has to be important to you, very important to you and your family, the most important thing to you, so you can you can dedicate yourself to this a hundred percent. Something else that I find kind of amusing, and there's even a couple people in the Facebook group who have done this, they're um, they're not willing to watch the entire hour and four minute long video there. Well, can you make a video that's that just kind of hits on the points, the important points of it? Well, if your life is not worth an hour and, and four minutes, then, I mean, you should probably just go back to what you were doing before in the first place. Um, I want to tell you a really quick story real fast. Um, I had a student uh, come to my class probably probably maybe seven months ago and this guy showed up and I immediately noticed he had these special shoes on um, and his shoes were probably no longer than my cell phone here and my cell phone's not huge and they were real thick shoes and what had happened he told me that he had real bad diabetes and they had cut off like half of his feet. So he was missing half of both of his feet. And I had told him, this was, I think I was still in my first 90 days of my program at that time. Um, and uh, I told him, yeah, I've got diabetes too. Um, I'm eating all plant-based. And he says, well, I went out to dinner last night and I had a big, fat, juicy steak and a piece of apple pie. And he just didn't seem to care about his body at all. And I said, well, I said, that must be nice. I've, I've got kidney disease also. And he says, oh yeah, I, I, uh, I got diagnosed with, with uh, stage three kidney disease. And I said, really? When was this? I don't know. I said, what was your GFR? I don't know. And I kind of pressed him on it for a couple times for the rest of the day. And he says, it was, he said, I, I've had kidney disease for about 10 years. So the way this guy was eating and just not giving a damn about his body, I guarantee this guy is not stage three anymore. He's got to be stage four or, or almost stage five. Um, and I talked to him about it and he said, well, I, if I feel sick, I go to the hospital. When it's my time to go, it's my time to go. And to me, that's very selfish. Um, I know he's got a wife, I know he's got kids, but he just didn't care about them. Um, something else that I've found to be very important um, in my recovery uh, is my walk with God. I, I feel like it's very, very important. I mean, I didn't do this on my own. I prayed. I prayed hard every day. I did not pray selfishly. I was not sitting there saying, God, please help me, please help me. I mean, I, I, I'm i thankful for everything that God has given me, everything I have. Um, we were, we were, God never promised us another day. Um, we should be happy with the day we have. Don't dwell on tomorrow. I believe the Bible, um, the Bible uh, mentions that to us that we're that we're not promised another day. Um, so I believe in in treating everyone uh, like it's the last time you're going to see them. Um, pray, uh, be thankful for everything you do have that's going right for you. I'm thankful for my my family. I'm thankful for the transportation that. God has given me for the house he's given me to live in for the the uh, income that he's given me in the business to be able to keep my family together so we can all work together so when you pray be thankful for these things um, pray for other people and and then 
pray for yourself. And, and one thing that I believe is you shouldn't just pray for something and sit back and wait for results. Um, we need to take an active part in our prayer and the answers to our prayer. Um, so pray for he healing, pray for comfort, pray for results, but get to work and, and, and work on that yourself also because um, God doesn't always just give when you ask. Sometimes the answer to prayer comes in other ways. Um, my stepdad told me a story. I heard this, I think he was telling it to us on the way to church. And as soon as I tell you this story, I'll end the video. He said uh, he was talking about a, a kid who had went out off to college and his dad has pa had packed his Bible for him and uh, the kid was kind of a poor college student and after probably about a, a month of, uh, of being in college, he starts calling his dad, talking about how he's having money problems. Um, can you send me some money? And and I'm really having some problems. And his dad says, well, have you been reading your Bible every day? And he's, he's yep, yep, I sure have. And uh, his dad would tell him, well, I, I, I mean, we're kind of tight on money right now. We're kind of behind on the bills. I, I don't have anything at the moment. Uh, give me a call back next month. And and uh, I'll see if we're in a better position. So the kid calls back again the next month, and he says, uh, have you been reading your Bible? And the kid kid says, yeah, yeah, I have. Well, anyway, the what the ending to the story is, is his dad had placed money at different spots inside the Bible. And if the kid had been reading the Bible and... Uh, and following God's word and praying, he wouldn't be having the financial problems because he would have been finding the, the money inside the Bible. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to end the video on that. It kind of drug out quite a bit longer than I wanted to. But those of you who have been following my videos, um, and you, you know other people who have got kidney disease, Send them this video first. Um, let them watch this video. And I'll have a link to my hour-long video in the description of this. But this one here, um, I think, is really important to watch first. So we will be back next week with uh, those ramen noodles that I told you about. And they are delicious. Um, so thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, I don't have a ton of subscribers and I don't get a ton of views, so I'm hoping that this video does make it out somewhere and helps at least one person. So once again, thanks for watching.